Step into the electrifying world of mixed martial arts, where an extraordinary fusion of cultures takes centre stage. Inside the iconic octagon, you'll witness a collision of traditionalists, brawlers, grapplers, wrestlers and boxers, each bringing their unique background and fighting style. Amidst this dynamic landscape, a prevailing sense of respect for opponents usually prevails. However, not all fighters embody this spirit. Enter a breed of competitors who defy conventions, taunting, screaming and bullying their way to victory. They are the ones who cannot be swayed by negotiations or reason. In the realm of these individuals, their motivations mirror the world of famous superhero. Unleashing chaos and destruction seemingly for the sake of it. Welcome to the MMA Mayhem. Subscribe and let's dive in. Join us as we delve into the captivating realm of mixed martial arts, where the clash of cultures and unyielding fighters create a spectacle that pushes the boundaries of combat sports. Brace yourself for a journey that combines skill, passion and a touch of madness within the unforgiving confines of the octagon. Michael Bisping, with his snarky British accent and unconventional pursuits as a house DJ, Bisping has often been a target of undeserved vitriol. Initially, it was easy to dismiss Bisping as the brash pretty boy, seemingly outshone by the true American grit of Dan Henderson on The Ultimate Fighter. However, over the years, Bisping has defied expectations, revealing a thoughtful, intelligent and genuinely likeable side. Of course, he hasn't been without his missteps, from declaring himself the unofficial Strike Force champion to making questionable remarks about Joseph Benavides, Bisping has faced his fair share of discretions. Yet one moment stands out as the epitome of his infamy, the infamous Lugia incident. Spitting on an opponent after knocking them out is an act that will forever haunt Bisping. Despite his charm in interviews and his ventures into music, he will always be remembered as the individual who engaged in that infamous act against Jorge Rivera's Conor Men. Anderson Silva At first glance, he embodies honor, respect and mastery with his bowing and black belts. But beneath that delightful, sugary exterior lies a darker truth. Silva can be quite the jerk. Rather than insulting cultures, or disparaging people's mothers, Silva's approach is to taunt his opponents and mercilessly pummel their defenseless faces until they're driven to flee the ring in utter humiliation. It's not a lack of moral compass that plagues Silva, it's simply an unparalleled superiority over his adversaries, a fact he relishes and flaunts. For his worst moment, we turn to his fight against Damien Meyer, a 25-minute display of taunting mastery. Within that spectacle, there exists a particular instance that stands as Silva's most disrespectful act, the thigh punch. Yeah, you read that correctly. Silva actually punched Maya on the thigh. When you possess the audacity and skill to strike another professional fighter in the lower body, you strip away their manhood, tearing it into minuscule, irreparable fragments. Nate Diaz Nate Diaz is the undisputed maestro of flipping people off, earning him a legendary status in the art of hand gestures. It's not just his technique that sets him apart, it's his versatility. No matter the time or place, if someone manages to ruffle his feathers, Nate is there, extending his middle finger with unwavering conviction. It's that straightforward. Let's take a moment to appreciate his fight against Benson Henderson. Despite dominating his opponent in a one-sided affair, Nate refused to let something as trivial as winning overshadow his showmanship. His dedication to the craft of flipping people off during the beatdown was nothing short of remarkable and will be remembered for ages. Surprisingly, Nate's worst moment doesn't involve his beloved middle finger. Prior to his bout with Donald Cerrone, a genuinely down-to-earth individual, Diaz, declined to shake Cerrone's hand when introduced by mutual friend Leonard Garcia. To further exemplify his Diaz demeanor, he knocked off Cerrone's trademark cowboy hat during that intense stare down at the press conference. And just to add a cherry on the top, he couldn't resist flipping him off during the fight itself. Shinya Aoki Shinya Aoki is a puzzle wrapped in an enigma. Look at him and you'd think he was the unassuming kid you used to copy answers from in middle school, but once he steps into the ring, he transforms into a wild, flamboyant spider monkey clad in eye-catching tights. However, it's his behavior outside the ring that raises eyebrows. Aoki has earned a reputation as one of the most talented submission specialists in MMA, yet he also holds the dubious title of being one of the worst winners in the sport's history. During his fight against Mizuto Hirota at Dynamite 2009, Aoki showcased his skill by brutally snapping Hirota's arm. But instead of showing sportsmanship, Aoki unleashed a whirlwind of unsportsmanlike conduct. He flipped off the crowd, the very people who support him, and proceeded to point and laugh at Hirota, who lay in agonizing pain on the mat. 
It was a display of poor sportsmanship that defied comprehension and is unlikely to be replicated anytime soon. Shinya Aoki, a paradox of unassuming appearance and unruly behavior in the world of mixed martial arts. Gilbert Evel. Gilbert Evel is a name synonymous with disdain and unsportsmanlike behavior. If you thought Shinya Aoki's brief moment of disrespect was bad, Evel takes it to a whole new level. In fact, he could arguably be considered the worst individual ever to step foot in the UFC octagon. Evel's lack of sportsmanship is so profound that it's almost comical. He seems to have no understanding of the concept, much like William Hung has no understanding of good music. In fact, a significant portion of Evel's Wikipedia page is dedicated to documenting his numerous instances of misconduct. But let's dive into his worst moment. Actually, it's more accurate to say that Evel's entire career is regrettable. From biting Karimullah Bakalev in 1998 to being disqualified for nearly gouging Don Fry's eyes, his transgressions are numerous. However, the pinnacle of his awfulness came in 2004 when he punched a referee and proceeded to kick him while he was down. Evel's constant disregard for rules and common decency is truly remarkable. It seems as though disrespect and rage have consumed him since his early days in the sport. Gilbert Evel, a name that will forever be associated with the dark side of MMA. Rampage Jackson Rampage Jackson, known for his charisma and humor, seems to possess a special talent for unintentionally causing offense. While he may not have set out to disrespect anyone, except for his longtime rival, Rashad Evans, his ignorance often leads him to cross boundaries without realizing it. The problem lies in Jackson's lack of understanding, and there are certain lines one should never cross. Most people tiptoe near that line but always return. However, Rampage takes a running start and leaps right over it. Among his questionable moments, including interviews with awkward, grinding and sexual advances, one incident stands out. During the Ultimate Fighter Heavyweights, Jackson relentlessly mocked contestant Daryl Schoonover, driving him to alcoholism, an approach that hardly qualifies as coaching. While some playful banter can be harmless, labeling someone titties to the point where they discharge from the army due to high blood pressure is a level of humor that only Rampage could appreciate. At the end of the day, it's clear that Rampage Jackson's disrespect is more of a product of ignorance than malice, but it still leaves a trail of unintended consequences. Tank Abbott Tank Abbott embodied everything that critics saw as problematic in the early days of MMA, packed into one burly, hairy figure. When Senator John McCain famously referred to the sport as human cockfighting, Abbott's angry and rugged image likely came to mind. With no formal martial arts training, Abbott boasted about his combat style, dubbing it pit fighting, which essentially involved brawling and wrestling while under the influence of Jack Daniels in the backyards or muddy patches outside bars. One of Abbott's worst moments occurred during his fight against John Matua at UFC 6. After knocking out the 400-pound Hawaiian, instead of showing sportsmanship or concern for his opponent's well-being, Abbott chose to mock Matua's unconscious state. It was a tasteless and disrespectful act, but ironically, it's this very incident that has etched Abbott's name into the annals of UFC history. In many ways, Tank Abbott embodied the wild and controversial nature of early MMA, a stark contrast to the more refined and disciplined athletes who dominate the sport today. In the fiery world of mixed martial arts, there exists a breed of fighters who thrive on chaos and controversy. They taunt, scream and bully their way through the octagon, fueled by an unquenchable desire to watch the sport burn. These fighters are untamed, relentless and unyielding, embodying the wild side of MMA that ignites both awe and controversy. They are the disruptors, the provocators, and the catalyst of adrenaline-fueled excitement, leaving an indelible mark on in the canvas of combat sports. Thank you for watching. Follow for more.